All right, Tara's kicking us off. All right, everybody, welcome to the community open house with neighborhood planning. This is our second open house and you had a question from the first open house and now we got an answer for you. Next slide, please. So if you're joining us tonight, tonight's agenda will be introductions. We'll have an icebreaker and we will answer the suggestion box questions that were sent in from the first open house. And then you'll have some resources that we will share with you at the end. Next slide, please. So just a reminder of who we are for neighborhood planning. I am Tara Bradley, neighborhood planning supervisor. We have Jade, senior neighborhood planner, and Liliana, planner two, neighborhood planner as well. And we are the neighborhood planning team. So just a few items that we wanna go over with housekeeping rules for this open house to keep it running smoothly. We just wanna remind you all, just be respectful of each other, be neighborly, which is most importantly in neighborhood planning. And if you have a crazy question, just raise your hand or also put it in the chat box below. Um, if you have any questions or you need additional information, um, just give us your contact information and we will be answering your questions. Next slide, please. So now I will give it to Jade, the senior planner, and she will get us into our icebreaker. OK, so we are going to kick it off with a classic BuzzFeed quiz inspired by the new TV show Generation Gap. And uh, I'm going to open it one second. OK, can everybody see the screen? Yes. OK, so we've got a lot of neighbors in Rowlett spanning multiple generations, and um, it's always fun for us to get into our events and hear different things people remember from their, you know, childhood or whatever else. So we found this fun quiz that we did in our office and had a good time with it. So we're going to go ahead and go through so you can shout out the answer. I think I already clicked this one, so I'm going to go to the second. You, you gave the okay. answer away. I know I gave it away. <laughs> OK. Here's your picture. Can anyone tell me what this was a part of? A computer, Game Boy, NES controller or a back massager? Do you just want us to answer? Yeah, shout it out. A computer Jack, mouse? Jackie, I mean, yeah. Look, answer. <laughs> a mute, a mute. It's a computer mouse. OK, let's see if you're right. Nice. I do remember seeing those actually, those like thick plastic ones with the loud clicks. Mm -hmm. OK, these used to be found in every car. What were they for? Powering the radio, lighting cigarettes, working the AC, starting the engine manually. <laughs> I hear Ronnie laughing. <laughs> you know the answer? Sure. Lighting your cigarette. Correct. Mm. Do they have those anymore? No. I thought I thought you not for not even for old cars. There like I old had old? one in my car. Yeah, they changed them to be like phone chargers, but I still see some. Oh, okay. I mean not in new cars, but in older ones, yeah. Okay, what did this dog want? A Dell computer, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, or a Ford truck? I know this one. Anybody else want to shout it out? Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Taco Bell dog. Okay, what company was this guy the spokesperson for? Dell, Mac, Windows, or Gateway? Dell? Final answer? Uh, yes. Okay, correct. Do you remember seeing those? Nope. I like vaguely, very vaguely remember those. 
OK, what was the name of this phone? Throwback. Chocolate, sidekick, razor, or droid? <clears throat> Chocolate. Final? Razor. Oh. Ooh. <clears throat> OK, chocolate or razor? Razor. Chocolate. I, I remember those. that one. The yeah. razor is those super thin ones that flip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every kid wanted those. I used to, I had a um, friend in my school who threw it off the bus window because the whole advertisement was that they are indestructible, but they're indestructible if it's closed. So she threw it open <laughs> out of the window and mom was not happy. Wow. Okay, what movie is this line from? Bring it on, save the last stand, legally blonde, or what a girl wants. Legally blonde. Okay, any others? Final answer, legally blonde? I see some nods, okay. Correct. Classic Reese Witherspoon. Okay, who sings this song? Oh gosh. <laughs> let him read it. Let him read it. Next. Keep <laughs> oh, scrolling. Next. Nelly. <laughs> you want to guess? The Nelly. Nelly. It's Correct. Nelly. <laughs> Got it right. I mean, that is because it is very hot outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What would you typically store in this? Printer ink, film for camera, sewing needles, or that's just a trash can. Your party <laughs> supplies. <laughs> party supplies. Hmm. Film for a camera. I think we're going to go with film. Okay, nice. Oh, this one's obvious. What did the subway used to be? Radio Shack, Blockbuster, McDonald's, or Pizza Hut? Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, what is the name of this texting method? <clears throat> four, four, pause, three, three, pause, nine, nine, nine equals hey. T81, quick text, T9, or easy text? I know this one. Quick text. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> I might pick a different answer. I never. Uh, that, that. Maybe, maybe know, that one was with the number nine in it, perhaps. T9. T9. Hey. That's a, well, that was a tough one for me. I don't remember that. Okay, is this bringing back any memories? What would you use this for? <clears throat> to recline in a chair? To loosen a screw? To shift a car into a different gear? Or to open a window? Turn on the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> throwing a wrench in things. <laughs> you know, that could be... That could be a recline a reclining tool but no it, <laughs> it is to open a window <laughs> nice before power windows were a thing in the car mm -hmm. when was that like when did those go out of style the 90s what do you I say? feel like i just i feel like i just got yeah, in a car that had that <laughs> early 2000s mm -hmm. they what do you mean <laughs> okay, what's this thing? A beeper, a pager, a speaker phone, a caller ID box. Caller ID box. Yeah, I think so. That's what I would say. Anybody else? Any disagreements? Nope. Okay. I agree. Nice. Todd agrees. I see her hand up. 
<laughs> oh, it's, it's, but that's what it is. That's what it's <laughs> to be. Is Radio Shack still in business? I don't think so. Yeah, I think they're gone. Okay. Oh, man. Childhood memories unlocked. Where could you play this game? <clears throat> game Boy, N64, PS1, or PC? Does anybody else remember this? Pinball machine. Yeah, this is like vivid, vivid memories for me. PC for sure. Preloaded Windows games. Cool. Okay, on what website would you see this? MySpace, Facebook, Zanga, Live Journal. What do we MySpace? Think? Okay, let's try it. Nice. Were you ever on MySpace? I yes, I had a MySpace account, <laughs> and I'm I I was not active then, and I'm not active now in, in my social it, media. I'm pretty sure it made a brief like it's never gone away, but it may have made a brief comeback in the last couple of years. I think people got kind of tired of Facebook, but so you're I, you're like cycling back around and like being cool, like ahead of the curve. I had a I had a classmate once that this was after college. I think he was he started he was just the person that invented or started MySpace. Not I think he was. He told us that. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then he sold it to whoever it was that made millions out of it. Tom, <laughs> what? It, Tom. it was at one of my environmental classes at UC at the UCLA Extension program. You're gonna and have to get in touch with this person. So we can, he was, yeah, yeah he's very vocal a very very cool uh you know very outgoing person like you could tell that yeah he's one okay. of those yeah that's cool Food, yeah fun fact <laughs> you meet okay. all kinds of people at ucla <laughs> yeah that's true you're out in la so yeah like that's gonna be more common you'll find somebody who's like legit like yeah. that inventing tech things yeah. OK, <clears throat> where were you supposed to stick one of these? In my computer, in my N64, in my PS1, in my camera. <clears throat> Ronnie, do you know what this is? Yep. Nintendo is 64. Yep. And when it stops working, you blow on it. Put it back yep. in. <laughs> OK, what were these dividers used for? <clears throat> <laughs> Y'all know those. <laughs> Public <laughs> newspapers, arcade games, phones. That's a men's room. Ronnie, you know this one. Um, phones. Phones. Should have played Maroon 5 payphone right after that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> Another memory unlocked. What did these yellow bracelets typically say? Live long, live hard, live forever, <laughs> or live strong. Live strong. I remember having one of those. Man, this keeps going. Okay. This is a long quiz. I know. <laughs> Do you want to cut it at this one? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Last one. What was this game called? Minesweeper, Sudoku, Pegged, or Tic Tactics? I have no idea. <laughs> I know this one because this is another like default preloaded PC game. I feel like uh, the kids who did this became engineers. Yeah. <laughs> My two <teeth> broken. <are> <laughs> Nice. Okay. So can y'all see the PowerPoint now? Yes. All right. That was fun. Got some good throwbacks in there. It's been a while since I've seen a few of those. Thank you, Jade. Yeah. Yes. RIP to the payphone. <laughs> <laughs> Next on to Liliana. All right, team. So what is going on with us neighborhood planning recently? Um, our most current happening is our neighbor fest 
mini series leading up to a larger event in in September, which we are really wanting the community out there. We want to socialize with you all. We want to get to know you. Uh, we want to know what you want to see more in our community. So um, we're here to have fun, but also interact with you. Um, and that is um, one of the programs that we're that's happening. We also have a B City uh, designation in which we became affiliates about a year ago. Uh, we just had our, our recent pollinator garden um, ribbon cutting ceremony for our first pollinator garden here in the city of Rowlett. Um, so that was that was something that, that was also um, something nice for us to uh, to get our community involved with. Um, why am I seeing Jade? I'm seeing oh, sorry. two screens. <laughs> OK, um, there's also an HOA legal clinic coming up, a clinic coming up in July 23rd uh, for for those of you inter that are a part of an HOA are, and are interested in knowing a lot more about the legality uh, on how uh, to run your HOA effectively. So that's there for our community as well. And this is a partnership with um, Garland and Plano. I'm not sure how many of you all know, but we are also the Rowlett Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Commission liaisons, um, and we support them um, in a lot of the events that they're hosting. And um, so we're out, you, you're you probably gonna see us out there um, in events that they'll be throwing around, th they'll, they'll be throwing uh, throughout the summer and fall uh, this year. Um, a couple of our programs um, that we have, year round for the most part is our Brock party trailer in which you can come and uh, apply and rent from us at any time of the year. Um, something very popular, you have all kinds of games there, tables, chairs, anything that you need to host a block party. Um, and there's a lot more information on our website. So please go ahead and visit us there as well. Um, Spirit of La Rowlett is also one of our programs in which we try to um, bring focus to an extraordinary person in our community that you, uh, our residents, uh, nominate for us and will go out there and recognize uh, this person. And that is uh, a program that happens quarterly. We also have a program uh, dedicated to um, recognizing the beautiful yards around uh, Rowlett, and that is also tied to um, Texas Smart Yard, which is also another program that recognizes eco-friendly or environmentally friendly uh, gardens out in our community. So that's also on our website. You feel free to go and check uh, that program out. Um, and lots of other cool things that are happening with with um, nature and in, in, in our community. Lastly is our City Academy, which um, our supervisor Tara Bradley hosts uh, is hosting at the moment uh, and we're looking to have it uh, every year uh, and this is an opportunity for our community to get to know more about how uh, the city as a whole uh, runs and how each department um, plays a key role in making sure that you know we we have a a, a community that is uh, that, that builds the well-being for all of you. And that's pretty much it when it comes to our programs thus far. But keep on the lookout for more because we have more coming up. All right, perfect. So moving into kind of the agenda for tonight's open house, um, we are opening up our suggestion box comments from the last open house. So this is only our second one. We're really just taking the time to answer the exact questions that are um, posed to us. Um, and so that's what we're going to do tonight. We've got three um, really talking about development concerns, um, Airbnbs, also called short term rentals, and then roadway concerns or kind of um, statements in there. So each of the neighborhood planners are going to go through the comments and uh, give you some resources as to how to um learn more about these specific issues that were raised 
OK, so this is me. <laughs> so the first question um, and just to let you all know, this came this question came to us prior to uh, the council meeting that decided upon this, you know what, whether this project was going to move forward or not. But the question is, what would you like to discuss uh, in the upcoming, uh, the, uh, we would like to discuss the upcoming vote for the warehouse district over the Liberty Grove and PGBT. So this project is called Lakeview Business District Plan Development, and it's located at 8318 Merritt Road. So the crossroads, Jade, if you can please uh, open the development activity map, which is another tool that um, I don't know if any of you all know, but it is on our G on the Rally GIS webpage. Um, and it's a part of, um, it's a tab that will let you know all current and future developments that are happening in our city. Um, and this is one of them. So as you can see, can you zoom in Jade, please? Mm -hmm. So as you can see this, the crossroads here are Merritt Road uh, and Liberty Grove, and it's right adjacent to PGBT. Um, and this is a planned development project for approximately 175 acres of office and light industrial use development. So um, just to brief you a little bit on this project, so City Council did move forward to approve the rezone uh, for this uh, particular development. And you feel free to go uh, ahead and watch the recording. It's on the A April 5th. Uh, City Council recording, which you can find on our uh, website as well. And as you can see, um, we have the link shared here on our presentation. Um, to briefly go over the status, like I said, it's already been approved. So the next steps, it's going to be all at ministerial. And what that means is that uh, the, develop the developer just turned in this week the development plan. Uh, which means that now our development review planners and engineering is going to are going to be reviewing for conformance with our code. Um, so all the architectural and engineering plans all have to conform to our code standards in order for us to approve anything and for them to move forward. After that is approved, uh, they they'll have to also go through a planning process. Um, in which there we uh, staff will ensure that the plat complies with all zoning requirements for that associated piece of land. Um, after that, if if they get that package approved, then um, they will have to go through a building permit process in which they'll have to conform with the international building codes, uh, fire and energy. Once that is all done, um, then if um, everything goes well with construction, then um, all and all inspections are uh, passed, then the building official will issue a certificate of occupancy. And uh, just as uh, a general knowledge, this all projects that go, uh, you know, that come to the city or outlet, or most of all projects have to go through this development review process. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of information that I encourage you to go check out on our website. We have the zoning and development handbook, which gives you it provides you a detailed explanation to each one of these step processes. Um, thank you, Jade, for pulling that up. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'll let it load in the background. <clears throat> if not, this presentation will we'll have it uploaded on our website, right, Jade, if I'm correct. So they'll be able to click it, and you feel free to contact us at any point and we can guide and we can um, send these links to you all. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. So. If you want more specific information about the project of uh, the developer Jackson Shaw, also has uh, a website in which you can go ahead and take a look at the general information, which has their concept plan, their building design, and studies they have done uh, on the site thus far. 
Um, so I encourage you to also go and uh, visit what they have. And if you have any questions, they also have their contact information there in which uh, where they can be reached. And again, if 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 um, you feel like your questions are not being answered, uh, we do have a project manager assigned to this project and his name's Alex Koenig. He he um, he uh, is uh, free to answer any questions for you all. Um, for this uh, specific project and as a side note i just i just wanted to let you all know that there is a lot of ways to get involved um, we have our city council meetings which i encourage you to go to the website uh, make sure you uh, check what is on the agenda items for that week and if you have a particular project that you wish to speak on you're able to do that at the public hearing during the meetings, the same thing with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, we have a schedule on our website as well, which is highlighted on the previous uh, slide in which it'll tell you when our City Council meetings are and when our Planning and Zoning Commission meetings are going to take place. Um, we also provide mail notices to if any development is, or is planned to go into uh, an area within 200 feet from, from any neighborhood. Uh, we have physical signs that are placed where wherever uh, we're going to have a planned development come in. Um, like I said, there's staff reports, public meeting records that you can add, you have access to if you'd like to have find out more information about what's going on with development here in the city of Rowlett. And like I, I mentioned before, you have the opportunity to leave us your comments during um, you know, for for an open house conversation like we're having today, um, you're welcome to reach out to the planning, uh, to our planning uh, manager or the project managers that's working in, for this for a project specific, or um, to us, like I mentioned before. Um, and if you need more information, just feel free to ask us. We'll have we'll have it all at the end of this presentation. Thank you, Liliana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our second question is Airbnbs and neighborhoods. And the question that was asked in the suggestion box was how to combat these Airbnbs coming into a single family neighborhood. So I would like to first start off with a little background here. In the city of Rollout, we actually call them short term rentals. And you can find the definition of short term rentals in our code of ordinance in Chapter 10, Article XI. 11, excuse me, in Division 1, Section 10-404. But to provide a definition of what short-term rental properties mean, it is a single family or a duplex dwelling or accessory structure that is leased or rented for a period of less than 30 days. Um, it is a residence that's operated as a bed and breakfast occupied by the owner, a tourist home, tourist house or tourist court, a uh, lodge, lounging house, rooming house, or inn, a hotel, motel, or other temporary residential facilities of less than 200 rooms. Um, Short-term short rentals do not include group homes, assistant care facilities, nursing, hospitals, clinics, or other facilities providing medical re rehabilitation or health care. Um, no more than two adult guests per bedroom plus no more than four additional adults shall be allowed in a short-term rental property and the maximum occupancy is limited to no to no more than 12 persons so um with that the city of Rolla has taken a proactive step um, with short-term rentals. So if you are planning to have a short-term rental within the city of Rollett, you must re register with the city and you must make sure your short term rental complies with the neighborhood compatibility provisions of home occupations as described in section 773303D1C of the Rollett Development Code. So some of the provisions that this code requires is that they shall not make any um, external changes to the appearance of the existing building. Um, vehicles must be sensible. You can't have larger um, vehicles situated in the neighborhood or obstructing um, parking for other residents. 
Um, there's no additional parking areas that shall be located in the front setback or exterior, and there shall be no advertising devices on the property which are visible from the outside dwelling or accessory building. And it shall not create traffic or parking congestion, noise, vibration, odor, glare, those type of nuisances. Um, when initially when short term rentals register, they have to do a inspection and that is a one time inspection at the beginning before they start um, their business practice. Um, short term rentals can be inspected annually, but that is by the permission um, receiving consent from the landowner. And also air, these short term rentals do uh, have to be associated with a hotel tax as well, so they are required to pay a hotel occupancy tax as well. So um, you may say, well, how do we combat the Airbnbs? Um, that is by letting your code enforcement know about activities if it's a, to, for, to, for them to observe for issues or violations that are happening within the city. Of, city. So code enforcement is your go to if you're having issues or any violations with these short term rentals and if they're not complying with the neighborhood compati compatibility provisions that are set forth in our Rowlett code. Next slide, please. So a person that you want to be able to contact if you're having issues um, is Janet Tucker. She is the neighborhood services manager located in community development. I have on this slide her email and her phone number. And also you can also find her contact information on the city website. Also another step I want to um, remind everybody of, there is an ordinance that we already have established for the short term rentals, but on July 12th, they will, Janet Tucker and her team will be going before city council in a work session about short term rentals to discuss if they need to revise or add anything to the ordinance that um, is existing at this time. So, and that is July 12th and that's city council, um, a city council work session. Um, it's not a public hearing, um, but you are more welcome to come and voice your opinions as well as just as Liliana had explained that there are opportunities for individuals to explain their needs and wants at city council meetings as well. So again, there is um, Janet Tucker's number if you have any additional questions. If you have any additional questions right now, you can send, it, send them to me in the chat or you can raise your hand and I can be able to answer the questions that you have or get you to the right person. Okay, thank you for your time. All right, <coughs> Tara. Excuse me. Thanks, Tara. Um, I'm going to go ahead with question three. Uh, this was really about road improvement, so I'll read the suggestion box comment. This is verbatim. I've uh, bolded some of the, I guess, key concerns in here, but it is about Kirby Road and Chaha Road and kind of the intersection there. Um, the new blacktop road work on Chaha and Kirby looks great, but it desperately needs lane marking, not only a center stripe, but also on the outside of each lane. It has become even more of a commute for many people in several neighborhoods of the area, so traffic is high. The roadsides are now loose gravel, and I have seen many motorists slide over too far and throughout gravel rocks, and they can lose control. Adding to the misery is that at night, it is a dark road and there needs to be more lights, especially a street light at the S curve when turning from the 190 access road onto Kirby, dangerous intersection. <clears throat> so that's uh, straight from the suggestion box. Uh, the road work that they're talking about with the blacktop is uh, asphalt. That was an improvement from the extent of this yellow section here. So um, recently kind of repaved this area and uh, they mentioned the specific intersection. So I'll pull out, I pulled out some of the key issues in here. So the first one being it needing striping, center stripe and an outer stripe. Um, this is something that was actually completed, um, keeping in mind here that the suggestion box comments came in somewhere around March, April. And so if you are seeing something that looks uh, concerning, perhaps related to a road, uh, it may not be finished yet. So keep that in mind as well. And if you have any concerns about that, 
that you feel over time are not addressed, definitely feel free to reach out to Public Works. Um, they are going to be the point of contact for these types of projects for the most part. Um, some insight that they had related to this is that sometimes things are not required and that can be tied to a state or federal standard for um, roadway conditions or design. And so if you have something like that, again, that is a concern, always feel free to reach out and they can um, give you kind of that more technical expertise. <clears throat> but this is something that is finished. The striping is done. Um, the second issue was related to increased traffic. And pulling from what the suggestion had to say, so it's unclear if the concern was saying that because it's been newly improved that there is more traffic or if it would, had high traffic beforehand. But either way, again, if you have concerns um, with the amount of traffic being uh, relatively high or abnormally high based on your experience there, definitely speak to Public Works to see if they might be able to do a traffic count or share um, traffic count information with you. Um, I will pull the map up if my internet will load um, in the next couple slides, but they do have a traffic count map. So it shows the amount of cars most of the time in either direction of the road that are using it on a daily basis so you can kind of see what's normal um, and if things are increasing over time <clears throat> which can then influence you know the need for improvements widening that type of thing um, the third concern here is just dangerous roadside conditions. So they specifically mentioned kind of loose gravel on the side and um, in parentheses there you see kind of instead of a paved roadside. So this is an assumption based on the comment, but um, we're kind of assuming that they may be referring to having an, a less area on the outer side of that edge of the lane um, for like a, a paved shoulder so that if you know somebody's kind of veering off the road they have more room instead of going into private property or things like that and so i'll have a picture on the next slide to look at this a little more but um kind of some insight from public works here is that they're really explaining essentially there's you know the right of way that they have to work with so right of way is the area of land that the city owns that the road is in um, that is, uh, I guess, I don't know, cocooned. It's it's in the middle on either side of it is private property, so your property lines. Um, and so within that, however much room there is, they have to work with um, the safest, safest conditions that they can make work that are meeting those standards. Um, as referenced earlier, so they're saying the millings here that are left from road construction help to leave a slope instead of a ledge, which does make it safer. So um, again, I'll share a picture of that in a second, but if you have technical concerns like this, again, feel free to reach out to Public Works and we'll give you some contact information. Um, <clears throat> The last concern is low visibility at night, especially on the curve. Um, this is something we've heard in, um, it, I'd say it's a relatively common concern is uh, curvier roads and people coming around the curves and not having as much visibility. Um, and so when it relates to lighting, we've let engineering know about a suggestion for more lighting, um, but in speaking with Public Works, they have uh, let us know that essentially to prove the need for additional lighting, you'd have to do what's called an illumination study, um, which would be a technical assessment of these specific areas and conditions. So um, Jeff Cohen, who's the interim director in engineering, would be the person who would oversee this and we let him know. So um, a combination here when it comes to road improvements, there's a lot of different things that could be concerning potentially on a road. Um, they may come with different technical standards and we'll always try our best to get you in touch with the best person to talk to when it comes to those things if we don't have that um, expertise ourselves. So an example of this is again kind of an assumption of what the comment was getting at, but this is an example here along that section they were referring to on Kirby Road um, from Kirby Road in one of those side streets, Brittany Drive. You can see this is kind of like a gravel area, but you can see the roadway or the, the asphalt ends here. So there's not um, like what's typically referred to as a, a 
paved shoulder here. It's grass and gravel underneath, I believe, um, compared to further up the road where there's a bridge and more of a need for a shoulder. Um, so you'll see like concrete and more room for that paved area. So again, uh, they have to work with the amount of right of way that's available and kind of technical standards and and um, work within those parameters. So, but you can see here that the striping is finished. So some resources um, in particular related to this. So as mentioned, uh, the director of engineering, Jeff Cohen, our interim director, can reach out to him for those illumination study or lighting concerns. And then Ronnie O'Brien, who I believe is on the call, is the interim director of public works and uh, roadway conditions, uh, traffic, those types of things. He can help answer those questions. Um, I'm going to try and stop share to get the internet to work for a second and share these maps and walk through those. There we go. <clears throat> OK, so you should see the traffic counts map. And I'm going to zoom in. So you can see here's Rowlett. If you can get oriented, the toll roads here, Lakeview Parkway going down, the southern kind of portion of the city, Kirby Road's right here. So you'll see on this section on the traffic counts, it's got labels here for cars over a 24 hour period and this is from 2021 so public works may have more up-to-date information or a better insight on this but you can see eb and wb it's eastbound and westbound so they're taking counts of how many cars are traveling on this and then same thing on chaha you've got several counts at that intersection eastbound westbound and then at the intersection of Chaha and Rowlett Road, same thing. So you can see the numbers increase as you get to the bigger streets like Rowlett Road, and then they kind of filter down. So this can help tell you what's normal over a 24 hour period and per potentially influence some of those uh, more technical discussions you may want to have with public works in particular. <clears throat> Another one I want to show really quickly is the CIP map. And we'll see if it'll load. Whoops. OK, so these are um, essentially city improvements that have been uh, slated to be completed. This one is from 2021. And it's broken down into paving and drainage, which is more related to roads. Um, there's also other projects that get um, funded through what's called a bond, called a bond election. So parks things and public safety things like uh, police station design and emergency sirens. But um, if you have a concern with a road, say you lived off Kirby and thought the road condition was bad and want to see it improved, I would check the most recent map um the most recent CIP map and see if it's something that's already funded and is going to start construction or design or whatever um and then reach out to the um to us and we can get you in touch with you know the most applicable department who might be managing this type of thing um, but it has really helpful info in here you know what the name of the project is a general overview of cost and um, a bit of information about timing. So, um, and usually pictures as well, which is really helpful. So you can see what's going on. Um, so hopefully that helps just a bit. Let me go back to our presentation. Sorry, y'all, it's getting a little slow over here. Do you want, Jay, do you want me to put it up, pull it up? Can you see it now? You should be able to. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and it's full screen, right? Yes. OK. OK. The other one, um, these are in the same location in terms of maps. If you go to the city website just up top under, I think the community tab you'll see, or departments, you'll see just maps. And under there, there's all of these listed. So there's a lot of helpful information. There's interactive maps. You can click on things and see different qualities of um, the information that's loaded on there. Um, static maps, so like PDF ones, but you can see street conditions and kind of use that to tie into the CIP projects and see what may be funded already based on the condition of roads. Um, and then kind of regular analysis that goes on in terms of the usage of that. So um, definitely check those out. <clears throat> All right, back to Tara. Thank you, Jade, for that information. I'm glad to see where we can look at those maps to see what's going on in the city we're all at. Um, and also thank you, Ronnie, um, the director of public works here, um, assisting if there's any other questions we have about um, roadway projects and such. Um, so how you can participate with neighborhood planning. We have a newsletter that goes, well, new uh, uh, electronic news letter that goes out monthly. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter online or you can just let one of us, one of us know if you want to be, if you want to receive the newsletter. Also, you can check out our announcement pages to see what's happening with neighborhood planning, the different events that we have. Um, so one of the items you may find on our announcement page this coming up month is um, open houses that you all are here today um, participating in and also our HOA legal clinic that is on July 16th on Saturday. It's $15. It's free legal advice. Um, so it's very for $15. That's a steal. Also for neighbor fest that's coming up. That's our three uh, four well three part series with a grand finale at the end in the downtown square. Um, happening um, the next one is july 23rd on saturday and it will be at cedar bridge park um, and this will have an activity called safe routes to school so a lot of things going on in neighborhood planning and a lot of things you need to check out on our website so i would encourage you to register uh, for our newsletter next slide please so in order to help with these uh, open houses going on, we do ask that if you could fill out a suggestion box, if you got a comment about anything, you got an idea about our open houses, you can click enter it on our Oak suggestion box, which is our community open house suggestion box. Also, some other things that we are looking for in neighborhood planning is if you want to be a leader, um, we support citizen led efforts. Um, if you have an initiative you're working on, let us know about it and see how we can help you out in neighborhood planning. Also, unique groups we're looking for, people with unique skills we're also looking for, and we're always in search of volunteers and historic resources and historians, which are reside in the city of Rowlett to help neighborhood planning flourish. Next slide, please. And so where you can find us is on our website. Um, on our website, you'll find our events, our announcements, and our collaborations with other cities and other departments as well. You will see us at Rollet Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion meetings, also at Keep Rollet Beautiful meetings. We'll be out at parks events. Um, you will see uh, Jade at the Farmer's Market coming up this Thursday as well. So those these are places where you'll see us and in your neighborhood hosting block parties as well. So we're out and about. We get around town. So See us, tell us when you see us, say hey, and we'll remember your name. Next slide, please. So this concludes the question box portion of our open house. Thank you for coming to our second open house, and we will see you next time, early fall, for our next open house. So if anybody has any questions, please chat it, or we got like, seven minutes left but let us know your thoughts if you want to right now as well and thank you for coming ladies i just want to say what a great job i enjoyed being here tonight thank you thank, thank you, you. <laughs> I enjoyed it.
got to see old telephone booths. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. You bet. Yeah. Hey, I must have done a great job explaining because nobody had any questions about road. <laughs> you were on point, let me tell you. <laughs> OK, I guess we'll give it a minute. And if nobody has any questions, we can close out. Um, I guess in closing remarks too, if you have anybody who might be interested in learning more about neighborhood planning uh, or want to see this type of thing, we are recording it and it will go up on our website web page um, on the city of Rowlett website. So just look for community open houses and you should see the recordings on there from the first one and we'll try and have this up tomorrow. <clears throat> Let us know if you have any other suggestions for us to have for our next um, open house as well. Um, or maybe speakers you'd like to have us come at one of our, one of our open houses. You could have um, maybe a certain council member who might be on the meeting right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I don't think we're going to get any other questions. Um, I think we're good. I think we can go ahead and wrap up. But thank you all so much for joining. It's always nice to see everyone, um, even if it's on Teams. So, yes, agreed. We'll see you out and about. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.